Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. The literal combat ship scandal, LSC, is worse than the 1MDB saga. And yet, no one has been found responsible. No former defence minister has been grilled and no explanation has been offered. It's business as usual in Putrajaya. There were three ministers ministers of defence in the lifetime of the LCS scandal. Zaid Hamidi, who is now Deputy Prime Minister. Hishamuddin Hussein, whose whereabouts are not known. And now, Muhammad Hassan, the current defence minister. The Prime Minister during the time the LCS was proposed was Najib Abdul Razak. Zahid said he is not responsible and then he pushed the blame to Hishamuddin Hussein. When they, when the ministers want to spend billions of ringgits of taxpayers' money, they are quick to sign the piece of paper of authorization. But when things go wrong, they shake their heads and say, no, no, I'm not responsible, he is. On the 21st of August, The Edge reported that Bausted Heavy Industries uh, sold its 21% uh, stake in Bausted Naval Shipyard to the Ministry of Finance for a nominal sum of one ringgit. To the casual observer, it looks very much like a bailout. And we are still in the dark about the role played by the former defence ministers, the ministry officials, and also corrupt cronies. What did the taxpayer do to deserve all of them? How many more billions of ringgits of taxpayers' money will the government spend recklessly on the wasteful defence ministry with its retinue of allegedly corrupt officials and crony companies? Earlier in the year, the government decided that the scandal-ridden LCS contractor would be taken over to ensure the LCS project's completion. Yeah, we know the arguments. Yeah, if if Bausted Naval Services is not saved, a Bumi Putra company will have to close shop. They'll go bankrupt. The mainly Bumi Putra workers will face unemployment. The company will lose talented employees, and the Malay electorate will be angry because nothing was done to save them. That's the story that they will sell to us. Of lesser importance, perhaps, is the argument that saving the LCS project will ensure that our extensive shoreline will be protected against foreign invaders or pirates who can take over high-value cargo on container ships. Who would have thought that the deadliest pirates that Malaysians need protection from are on land, not, at the, on, not on the sea, they're on land in the form of the former defence ministers, the main contractor for the LCS project and the subcontractors. The pirates live among us. They are actually in Putrajaya. And the government appears to dismiss our moral outrage. Yet again, we must learn to understand that at the end of the day, what matters to them most is votes. Your vote, my vote. We've been told that in Bausted Naval um, Services' revised contract, the number of commissioned ships has been reduced to five from six. And to add insult to injury, the government will pay an additional 11.2 billion ringgit compared to the original cost of 9 billion ringgit. The first vessel will be delivered in August 2026 and the fifth in April 2026. 29. Why should we believe Bausted Naval Services this time? Why? Why should we even trust the Ministry of Defence? 
The contract to build the LCS vessels was awarded to Boston Naval Services in 2013. The first of the six vessels should have been delivered in April 2019 and the last in October 2021. Nine years from when the contract was awarded, the Public Accounts Committee, the PAC, told us that none of the six ships that were commissioned had been completed. Putrajaya had already paid 6.08 billion ringgits to BNS, Bausted Naval Services. Has no one in the Defence Ministry and the Finance Ministry heard about due diligence? We paid 6 billion for acquiring ghost ships and for money to line the pockets of dirty politicians dirty civil servants and cronies. The audited accounts for Boston Naval Services for the financial year ending 31st December 2022 showed that Boston Naval Services recorded net liabilities of, I think it was 848 uh, million ringgits, whilst the losses after tax were 150 million ringgits. BHIC claimed that the one dollar, one ringgit selling price was determined in consideration of this latest audit. With the liability and debt of around one billion ringgit, the six billion ringgit that has already been paid out, the amended cost of building the LCS of 11 billion ringgit, and perhaps a few billion ringgits thrown in here and there for incidental expenses means that we could be looking at the taxpayer having to fork out around 20 billion ringgit. And so it looks like 1MDB, the saga involving 1MDB, looks like loose change in comparison with the LCS scandal. On... Uh, December 2022, last year, the newly appointed Defence Minister, Muhammad Hassan, told reporters that ah, there is no point talking about history when he was grilled about the, the scandal about LCS. He said, we will ensure that the ships are built. No point talking about history. Mohammed claimed that he would be briefed on the LCS project to obtain a clearer picture of the multi-billion ringgit project so that he could study the background of the LCS delays and the issues involved. Ironically, he failed to appreciate that being briefed and studying the delays and issues have a historical context. Like most Malaysian politicians, he is out of touch with the sentiments of the people. We have lost billions of ringgits via the porous uh, defence ministry, which fritters away our taxpayers' money on ghost ships, on low-quality armaments and on useless weaponry. So will Muhammad understand that history, it is only through history that We'll, 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 we will be given a chance to learn from our own and other people's past mistakes. Defence Ministry must rate amongst the top five corrupt ministries in Malaysia. It is a heavyweight ministry. When things are purchased, they are in the hundreds of millions or even billions of ringgits, with the exception of bailouts, where it only costs one ringgit. So over the decades, there have been several allegations of bribery and corruption in the Defence Ministry where foreign officials have allegedly been bribed, where equipment has been lost or gone missing during an audit, or where weaponry and armaments have fallen off the back of a lorry. But do we hear of anyone or of any company being found guilty and being punished for their crimes? The unity government cannot simply reward failure and not tell us who was responsible for the LCS scandal and what punishment awaits them. Why is Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim sweeping more dirt 
under the carpet. We want answers. Who or which minister or ministers were responsible for the LCS scandal? Will they be punished? Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.